So yes, two refloating attempts on the stranded empty Phoenix tank have failed and it is becoming a desperate situation as the spring tide conditions were diminishing very fast. If the opportunity were lost then, it might have taken another month to try again. It played off in the quiet upmarket suburb of Sheffield Beach in the town of Polito in the province of KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. The geographical position is shown under the video and if you copy and paste it into Google Earth Pro, it will take you there. In the previous video, we looked at the second refloating attempt on the 1st of August and what went wrong then. It was now a day later, the 2nd of August, and the cable needed to be reattached and solidly secured for starters. The expected late afternoon high tide was going to be at 5.40 p.m. and sunset at 5.24 p.m. On the next day of the 3rd of August, high tide was going to be at 6.17 p.m. and sunset roughly the same at 17.25 p.m. The high tide would now have moved away from the optimum spring tide and the attempts would be very opportunistic. The operation would also now take place in the dark and if the refloating is successful, the towing away would also take place in the dark. As the hull of the ship was damaged, the ship needed to stay afloat by pumping air into it and it would require the presence of a salvage crew. All of this would be more complicated and potentially dangerous in the dark. In the previous video we also saw that the combination of the two tucks in tandem had a beneficial effect and a refloating almost took place. If the cable didn't snatch before the ship could be pulled loose completely, this would probably have happened. I was not sure what the plan was on the 2nd of August and worst of all it would be horrible if a refloating took place without me knowing about it because I obviously wanted to capture it. By now I was pulled in by this developing story and I was hoping to see it through to the end. I know it was unlikely that an attempt would take place before the peak of the high tide. So I decided to go down to Steve's Rock again as I did on the previous day. It was not blocked from traffic and I could go there with my car. I was there just about 1 p.m. and I had no tripod either. And yes, the Smith Amandla was lying in place and it was clearly attached to the cable. The Smith Siyanda was not present and was probably back at base in Durban Harbour. I took these photos and later became aware that a refloating attempt won't take place that day, but possibly on the next day on the third, so I went back home. On the next day, the third of August, I went to Steve's Rock again to ascertain the situation. I was there at a quarter to three in the afternoon and the Smith Amandla was lying in position. News was going around that there was going to be another attempt later closer to the peak of high tide at 6.17 p.m. as I mentioned before. Again, I didn't see the accompanying Smith's Yanda from the previous attempt. My footage is shaky here as I had no tripod with me. I was going to make sure that I take a tripod with me later. I went back for a while to prepare. Later, I took the long walk to the stranded ship and I was on the beach at around 5.30 p.m. That was right on sunset and the sky was a pinkish soft mix of pastel blue tinted by the inland sitting sun that reflected from a thin cloud layer on the horizon. The beach was filled with excitement and people brought their dogs and kids and walked purposely towards the empty phoenix as it was lying there in waiting of better prospects. The cable was attached to the anchor chain of the ship and it was as straight as an arrow. In position was the Smith Amandla, and yes, a little further on was the Smith Siyanda, but it did not appear as if she was attached. It looks like she was just observing. Why that was, was not too clear, but, uh, but maybe there wasn't a cable available after all the drama that we had in the last few days. That's what I thought in any case, but maybe it's not how it works. But the salvages meant business. Smith Siyanda was stationed mainly at the Durban Harbour. She is designated as a firefighting vessel but it's much more than that in reality. A strong tuck in its own right, tuck boats have very powerful engines and if they are used to pump water, they are very efficient in firefighting scenarios. The 45 meter long vessel is no exception. At the time of the Empty Phoenix project, she was part of the Smith stall, but nowadays she is simply called Sianda. 
For the sake of history, I will refer to it as Smit Sianda. While it was still light, I took video of the activities around the ship. But it became too dark after 6 p.m. and I started to take long exposure photos. It was the only way to get something of value. At 6.30, the tug was pulling at full strength on the peak of the high tide. I just kept on taking 30 second long exposures and in three such consecutive exposures I summed up the whole event of that refloating attempt. In the first photo you see the cable stretched out as straight as an arrow under the full strength of the amount lock. In the second exposure at 6.50 p.m. The cable snapped again and the whole anchor chain that it was attached to is ripped through the porthole at the bow and it caused a shower of sparks in this way. That was quite dramatic and I'm happy that I could capture it in this way. It would be less dramatic if it was on video. In the third exposure, the cable is clearly missing in action. The opportunities that existed in the remnants of the spring tide was now exhausted. The operation was now postponed for a month till the next new moon and spring tide. In the meantime, more salvaging and cleanup took place, as well as planning for the next operation. This time two cables would be used and they would be connected to the two tugboats separately. Captain Nigel Campbell, Deputy Chief Operations Officer at the South African Marine Safety Authority, SAMSA, released the following statement after this refloating attempt. SAMSA of Smita Mandla Marine and the Department of Environmental Affairs, DEA, are taking the following steps. The next reflotation attempt is planned for the spring tide on 30th of August. Preparations on board the Phoenix for the reflotation attempt are continuing. Smith Amandla Marine will keep a team on site to monitor the integrity of the vessel. Regular patrols will be undertaken to monitor and react to tra any traces of oil found on the beach. Planning has commenced on the steps that may need to be taken to ensure the removal of the vessel in event that further refloating attempts are unsuccessful. To this end, Smit Amandla Marina brought in experts from Holland who have undertaken many such operations previously. These options will be presented to SAMSA and DEA on the 12th of August. An environmental impact assessment will be undertaken as part of the process. Captain Campbell also made the following statement on Thursday the 4th of August. The KwaZulu Natal High Court confirmed that the vessel may be sold to the party that submitted the highest bid. This requires the vessel to be afloat for onward towage for India to for scrap and the fuel recovered from the vessel may be sold. These funds will be used to offset a small portion of the expenditure incurred by the state. In the next video we will take you on the fourth and final attempt to refloat this ship. The salvaging crew now had enough opportunity to properly deal with all pollution threats and to prepare everything that was needed for the fourth attempt. Please subscribe and press the bell and like button as well to stay informed and to support this channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the other side in episode 6, the final and most exciting chapter. Thank you very much for watching.